here all day. Yep. Pretty, <clears throat> pretty much. Like I usually, I'll have like the freezer, the <clears throat> the freezer in the tour room. I have like meals, <laughs> like steaks, and you know they're all frozen. They're just defrosted during the daytime. Yeah. So last night I was I was gonna eat. I mean, we have a we have a grill over here, so I was gonna cook pork chops. So I was grilling pork chops, and then I started helping with the students. I was in the classroom. Fifteen twenty minutes later, I'm like. I left my pork chops on the grill. <laughs> that thing was crispy. I was like, I guess I'm not eating this tonight. Prepare the vehicle by removing any hubcaps or lug nut covers, loosen the lug or wheel nuts while the vehicle is still on the ground, and raise the vehicle to a comfortable working position. Consult the owner's manual for the recommended rotation sequence and check and compare the type of tire fitted with the original specification. If the original wheels and tires have been changed for aftermarket replacements, locate the recommendations for wheel rotation according to the aftermarket manufacturer. Check to see that the radial tires are not mixed with bias tires on the vehicle. If there is a mixture, the bias tires should be installed on the front and the radials on the rear. Note that some vehicles have smaller size tires on the front, and these must not be rotated to the rear. Normally, the wheels and tires are rotated by moving the front tires to the rear and the rear to the front. However, in some arrangements, they are moved diagonally, so the procedure should only be carried out in accordance with the vehicle's shop manual, owner's manual, or the type of tire fitted. Refit the wheels. Screw on the wheel nuts or studs. It is a good practice to put them on finger tight first before tightening further. Do not put the nut or stud into the socket of an impact wrench and power them on directly. This practice can lead to the wheel nuts or studs going on cross-threaded. Once the nuts or studs are ready to be torqued down, refer to the shop manual for the correct torque and tightening sequence. Typically, the lug nuts are tightened in a diagonal sequence on four stud wheels and in a star arrangement for five stud wheels until all of the nuts are tight. However, there are exceptions, so the manufacturer's recommendations should be referred to. This should be done to a specification of 50% of the recommended torque for the first stage and then to 100% of the specification at the second stage using the same tightening sequence for the particular wheel. Before removing the tire, check the tread and sidewalls for barbs or pieces of steel belt that may cause you injury. Also, inspect the tire for any obvious signs of damage. If there is any damage, the tire should be discarded. Check the wheel for any balance weights and remove them with the wheel weight tool. Locate the valve stem and remove and store the dust cap. Using the correct tool, remove the valve core, remembering that compressed air inside the tire will escape with some force, so make sure that the valve stem is pointing away from your face. Once all the air has expelled from the tire, fasten the wheel in the bead breaker with the outside of the rim facing towards the blade. Fasten the blade close to the edge of the rim while keeping your hands at a safe distance. Activate the bead breaker, which will force the tire bead away from the edge of the rim and over the safety ridge. Release the blade, turn the wheel one half of a turn, reposition the blade, and release this section of the tire as well. Release the blade, roll the tire away from the machine, and reposition it with the inside of the rim facing towards the blade. Repeat the bead breaking procedure. Fasten the wheel and tire assembly on the turntable and activate the jaws so that they hold the wheel centrally. Test the security of the wheel by attempting to turn it. It should remain still. Position the bead remover between the edge of the rim and the tire and apply some lubricant around the broken bead to assist in removal. Use a tire lever to roll the tire bead over the bead remover knuckle and at the same time push down on the sidewall of the opposite side of the tire. 
Activate the turntable so the bead is guided off the rim. Once the bead is removed, stop the turntable and lift the tire slightly and remove the tube if there is one. Guide the lower bead into the rim well and using the tire lever, roll the lower bead over the knuckle and activate the turntable. The tire will come off the rim. Remove and discard the valve stem. Check and remove any rust or dirt from the rim. Depending on the type of rim, a slightly different fitting procedure may have to be followed. Always check with specifications on the tire machine you are using before proceeding with the mounting of the tire to avoid damage to the rim. Select the correct type of tubeless valve stem and insert it through the hole in the rim from the inside. Using the special tool, pull the stem through until its groove fastens into the hole. Remove the valve core. Apply some lubricant to the tire bead and rim ridges and position the tire on top of the rim. Using the guide on the bead remover, position the lower bead so that a portion of it is positioned in the rim well. Activate the turntable and guide the tire onto the rim. Once the lower bead is fitted, position the upper bead so that it is guided over the edge of the rim by the guide on the bead remover. Activate the turntable and guide the tire onto the rim. As the turntable rotates, push the side wall down, keeping your fingers clear of the rim so that the tire bead is guided below the safety ridge into the rim well. This will prevent the bead and tire from tearing. Attach the tire inflator fitting to the valve stem, stand clear of the tire, and inflate it until both beads seat against the rim. Check the location of the bead indicator to make sure the bead is fully seated. If the rim is clamped from the outside, it will be necessary to release the clamps so the tire can inflate. Do not inflate the tire to a pressure greater than 300 kilopascals or 45 pounds per square inch. Otherwise, tire or rim damage can occur. If the beads do not seat, deflate the tire again, reposition it, add more lubricant to the tire and rim, and start the inflation process over again. When the beads are properly seated, remove the inflator attachment, remembering that compressed air will escape with some force, so keep your hands and face clear of the valve opening. Once the tire has completely deflated, refit the valve core using the correct tool. Reattach the inflator, stand clear, and inflate the tire to the correct pressure for that application. Use a soft brush and apply a small amount of soapy water to the bead. If there are any air leaks, they will be indicated by bubbles. Balancing a tire is critical to reduce vibration and also reduce wear on the tire. Wheel balance issues typically show up at approximately 40 miles an hour on most vehicles. Balance problems are typically not noticeable below 40 miles an hour and may disappear at higher speeds. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to balance the typical steel wheel. We're going to need to first locate an adapter that will fit the center hole of the wheel. Select the adapter you believe will fit in the hole of the rim. Verify that the adapter will fit the center hole of the rim. Install the adapter onto the arbor shaft of the wheel balancer. Make sure the small side of the adapter is facing outward. Place the tire up and over the arbor shaft and onto the adapter. Be careful not to bounce the rim on the arbor shaft, as it can cause the machine to come out of calibration. Install the plastic cup onto the retaining nut. Make sure the tire has remained on the adapter and begin to thread the retaining nut on. The retaining nut should thread on easily. If it doesn't, there may be a problem with the arbor shaft. Go ahead and tighten up the remaining nut until the rim is secure on the machine. Locate your on-off switch for your wheel balancer and turn on the wheel balancer. 
We now need to set up the wheel balancer to properly balance the wheel. The settings of the wheel balancer are critical to getting an accurate balance. To begin balancing the steel wheel, we need to make sure that our tape weight function is off on the machine. This is done by pressing the tape weight off button. We now have three measurements and adjustments that must be entered into the wheel balancer in order to accurately balance the wheel. Our first measurement on this machine is labeled A. This is the difference from the wheel balancer to the edge of the rim. This will be measured using the gauge on the side of the machine. Slide the gauge out until it just touches the rim. The gauge should be touching the rim and the location where the wheel weighs will be sitting on the rim. Read the gauge where it comes out of the wheel balancing machine. This rim is reading approximately 82. Use the up and down arrows for the A setting to enter the offset into the machine. Your display will read your current setting. Our second setting is labeled D on the wheel balancer. The D stands for rim diameter. The rim size can be located in the numbers on the side of the tire. Tire numbers are written like this one at a P235, 60R16. The 16 at the end is our rim diameter of 16 inches. Once again, use the up and down arrows to enter in the rim diameter. Our third setting on this machine is labeled W for rim width. Rim width is measured using a tire caliper. The caliper should be sitting flat on the rim right here. It should not be located on the edge of the rim where the wheel weight will sit. With the caliper in the correct position on the rim, go ahead and measure the reading on the caliper. This rim measures 7 inches wide, and enter your rim width into the wheel balancer. Spin the tire by hand to check for any rocks that are stuck in the tread. Large rocks will throw off the balance.